Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Tired? <laughs> uh, I am Rihanna Kedir. I am a GD in uh, Web uh, Technologies, uh, a Women Techmaker Ambassador and uh, GDG uh, Leader from. I work as a consultant on enterprise uh, web applications and I'm here because I am a Flutter enthusiast. Typically working in um, uh, enterprise apps, uh, talking about cross platforms, uh, what I uh, used to do is using web technologies to bring them to uh, mobile apps. So in my five years of uh, experience, I went to Cordova, Ionic, NativeScript, React Native, changed frameworks from AngularJS to React, back to Angular, and so on. And why Flutter? As, um, uh, as a developer in uh, uh, web technologies, I thought I could do everything, but that is not the case when I discovered uh, Flutter. Uh, I saw the announcement back in 2017 on Google I.O. and uh, I was not really uh, convinced by, the, by that time because there were already enough uh, um, frameworks to, uh, for a cross-platform uh, uh, development. But uh, then preparing a study drum of Flutter uh, as a GDG lead, I tried it out and uh, I, uh, I believed in it. I liked it. It was really um, easy to build in beautiful apps. And uh, the time to uh, starting with uh, uh, starting doing something really nice, uh, it took me uh, really less time comparing, for example, when I switched from Angular Jazz to Angular. And uh, things that we built were beautiful right away, so that's why I became a Flutter enthusiast. So, uh, we're gonna talk about Flutter for web uh, and its potentiality. Uh, having support for Flutter for web means uh, having a code compatible uh, implementation that can render uh, into the browser using uh, standard web technologies, meaning uh, bringing Flutter code into uh, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, and Canvas in, in this case to render into the browsers. Looking at the timeline of uh, Flutter for web support, uh, the support was, the experiment was announced in uh, 2018 as a Hummingbird project. And uh, on May we have the technical preview and currently we have in a beta version. Uh, it's not recommended for production. Uh, it has performance issues and uh, uh, bugs and everything, but uh, still it's, uh, it's uh, good to know that there is a way also for Flutter to, to, to run in the, in the, in the, into the browsers. So basically with the, support, with the Flutter for web support, we can compile the existing Flutter code, uh, use all its features, uh, embed that into a web page, deploy it to any web server, and without any browser plugin, we have it working in any modern browser. So how can we do that? Currently, we need uh, a SDK Flutter installed, uh, and uh, the other requirement we need is Chrome installed because debugging mode uh, for Flutter works only in Chrome currently. And we switch to, channel, to the beta channel and we uh, enable the web uh, configuration. With this, we can create our app and when we create, uh, we'll have a web uh, folder inside the package. Uh, and we can run it and open it in the, uh, in the browser and debug it with uh, the second command. For adding support for existing uh, app, we can do uh, Flutter create dot and run it in the web, uh, in, the, in Chrome. Uh, 
in the bag mode. So while building currently, we can use the Flutter Dev tools to, uh, in order to debug and uh, to uh, generate timelines, to generate event timelines. We can use the Chrome Dev tools. Uh, I, I recommend to use it in uh, uh, once we build it and not in a debug mode. And same thing for analyzing the performance of the app that is built. So to build, we just run Flutter Build Web, and with that, we have all that we need to run a Flutter code inside our web, uh, web page. So, um, this will populate a build uh, slash web directory with build files, uh, including assets, uh, the assets directory. Uh, and uh, we have everything in this folder, and uh, opening it in a web server, we have our Flutter code running directly in the web page in the web browser. So what happened behind is um, that our application, the Flutter SDK, through a Flutter web uh, engine, uh, we got the uh, necessary Dart code to running in HTML, CSS, and Canvas. And that Dart code is going to be uh, compiled through Dart to JS compiler. And it will give us the main Dart, uh, the main Dart, Dart uh, that JS file. And simply that runs in any modern browser. So this is the process that goes through currently to uh, from the Flutter code up to the uh, uh, web technology code. Basically, in web, what happens is like we uh, give the HTML, the CSS, uh, and the JavaScript, and the browser will take care of uh, building the layouts and, uh, uh, and, and uh, giving style for the layout. In the other case, when it comes to Flutter, uh, we have the building, the layouting, and the, the painting everything included in just one single JavaScript file, meaning that Flutter is going to paint everything for us. And uh, from our app with a web flavor that's why uh, lib, everything included directly in just a single minified file. And this file, it's already uh, optimized. Uh, it's uh, obfuscated, meaning that uh, uh, the, the code is unclear and readable for, uh, security, for, uh, secur for adding security to the source code. It's minified, meaning uh, all, uh, all unnecessary data uh, uh, and code are being removed, and it's smaller in a size and f f uh, faster for loading. And three checked, meaning, all, uh, meaning um, that unused models will not be included in the bundle during the build process, means that we have an optimized JavaScript file, and that has all the app inside it, and the rendering, also the rendering uh, engine inside it. So with this, we have just, fin we, we can uh, build and put uh, our uh, Flutter code inside web with just a command. That's really a nice thing. So what about Flutter plugins? Currently, we have uh, uh, some common uh, plugins already um, uh, implemented for web, like the shared preferences, the Firebase core and out, sign, uh, Google sign-in, the URL launcher, the video player, and uh, so on. If we need other plugins, we can check that into pub.dev and um, see the plugins, uh, see uh, by filtering the Flutter plugins for a web support. And there are like uh, a lot of plugins already available that we can put in, in our, inside our uh, Flutter code in case we want to implement, separ implement separately for uh, just web uh, platform. And if that's not enough, we can extend the existing uh, plugins for uh, web implementation by um, uh, coding against the plugin's public interface and using uh, its API. 
uh, or either we can implement our own plugin and add that uh, in the pub spec YAML and we build our uh, Flutter code and we have it running without any problem. On the other hand, Flutter web, uh, web apps have fully access to all existing Dart libraries too that can run in web today. And uh, Dart has been uh, running in web since it has existed. It means we have like a pretty mature uh, package uh, available. Uh, it has been used like for Angular and uh, uh, appli uh, big applications in productions written in Dart are available. So it means like we have the whole ecosystem we want uh, in order to um, have uh, uh, Flutter code running in web or uh, workarounds in, in order in cases that uh, some things doesn't work. So, uh, as I said, it's in beta version. It's still very early, uh, and uh, it remains like kind of, uh, some implementations. Uh, some things doesn't work, you can compile, compiling it multiple times, you see that it behaves a bit differently from the beginning, from the start, from the, inter from in the interaction and everything, but that's the test that you can do uh, to figure out what are the, uh, the problems in, uh, each, uh, in each application. So, I'm going to play it, sorry. Okay. So, thank you, Hilal Koran. I don't know if it's, if it's here. Anyways, this is a, an application uh, uh, fl Flutter for Web that I discovered today afternoon. So I put it right away. It's, uh, uh, it's well structured. I mean, it has everything. It's an admin app. And uh, this is a video of me discovering it. I was like, you girl going around to see it really works. There is the GitHub link uh, for, the, for the source code. So basically, even applications this complex can run for, with Flutter for web currently. In this case, uh, the whole uh, Flutter application is uh, compiled and served via web. But this is not the case that I wanted to talk about. I am excited about two uh, particular uh, scenarios of Flutter, uh, of, um, Flutter um, for web adoption. So one is embedding into web page Flutter interactive code. Basically, uh, web content, meaning uh, uh, a web page or web or a website or a web application focused on documents, can benefit uh, uh, by embedding Flutter web visualization. Uh, this can, for example, help us enrich um, our web uh, web apps. Uh, with uh, graphically uh, rich content and with an interactive uh, experience, uh, right in a static HTML or inside a web page. Currently, to embed, we use iframe tag and the source of uh, putting the URL, the URL of uh, our deployed uh, um, Flutter for web application. So as a showcase, this is a simple HTML static uh, template. It's an uh, open source template. It has a bootstrap for in it, some jQuery. It has devices, that CSS, which uh, uh, is a pure uh, uh, CSS for stimulating mobile apps uh, in the page. So it's like static, simple, and uh, nothing really all about it. Hmm. 
sorry, but so in this case, I just put a Flutter compiled uh, uh, web application inside uh, uh, inside the page with iframe, and that's it. Um, so in this case, we are showcasing, uh, uh, let's say, our mobile app with not an image and is not with a GIF, but uh, and not with a video, but with a Flutter compile call directly, and user can interact with it. And it's the same application that runs in the um, in, uh, uh, in in mobiles also. We can open it in the, uh, another window and interact with it full page, and so on. So uh, this is a simple showcase, not a big thing, but uh, uh, the early support of Flutter for Web can help us do this kind of things. Showcasing something beautiful that we build, and even if the performance is not uh, yet the same for uh, native mobile apps, but it's a way to interact inside a, inside a web page with directly our, our, our application with the code that we're going to deliver uh, as, a way, as a mobile app then. This has benefits. Uh, we don't have to uh, um, uh, deploy, we don't have to put all the, all the application. We can put just the UI or just the onboarding. Since Flutter make it simple to recompose our widgets and create uh, uh, and create uh, uh, mini applications, we can do that. And uh, uh, we can deliver it before releasing our application in the, in the uh, stores. And uh, also we can use it for uh, augmenting our usability tests on mobile applications. Having, uh, um, uh, having feedbacks prior to uh, releasing the real applications, which counts the feedback from the user counts a lot. And we can use it also to, uh, like for example, voting one, one, uh, one interface over the other interface. Doesn't have to be performant as a native app, but we just can deliver it, test it, and see the interaction of the user, our testers, uh, our clients, uh, and so on. This is a demo uh, that I did while organizing uh, uh, a workshop on Flutter Study Jam. So I just showed what application we're going to build. In this case, we have, uh, uh, you might be popular, this, this is a first code lab of Flutter. Uh, and uh, I put two, three uh, Flutter compiled applications inside a single web page and delivered it. And uh, it could be like a nice portfolio for a Flutter developer. You just put everything in one page. It's not for pro production, it's not for, uh, depends on wh what you want to do, but uh, simply you can interact with it. It, it can be also like a catalog of what you did uh, compiled in web and uh, uh, reachable with just one URL. So the scenarios of embedding Flutter uh, interactive content inside uh, web, web, uh, web pages, it's, it's huge. You can apply it in many cases, that depends on, uh, on you. Um, and in this case, the, um, uh, the performance of your app, it depends also on what you want, what you want to deliver. It's true, like uh, de uh, de delivering the whole app and uh, pretending a native um, uh, performance. Yet for web, it's uh, it's so early. But on the other hand, this way you can have like uh, delivered in uh, in uh, in scenarios that. It don't have to be performant, but still you can uh, gain a lot uh, of advantage from Flutter for Web. The same way we can uh, in, in embed online tools, data visualization, and working uh, mostly in uh, um, 
in uh, administrative uh, applications, having a consistent data visualization uh, cross-platform, uh, I think it's important. Uh, and uh, in this case, yeah, we can use uh, uh, just for data visualization embedded in web applications, in big web applications, or in administrative applications, as a charts or as dashboard or as uh, just uh, tables. So this scenario can go on. You can add just your simple login or a branded landing page, just a chat app uh, or a quiz app or something beautiful that you build along with a web page or web application without no problem by just use, uh, compiling it and just putting the URL with, where you deploy it. So as simple as that. And uh, embedding into web content not only enriches graphically uh, and permits interactive experience, but it's useful also for code reusability and uh, Y consistency. The second uh, scenario that uh, I want to talk about is packaging a Flutter code as a PWA. The feature of creating a PWA, uh, of uh, packaging a PWA is uh, in the roadmap. And I hope it will be delivered soon. But uh, for who doesn't know PW PWAs uh, are uh, web pages that behave just like a mobile app. You can download it from the browser URL directly. And uh, you can have it uh, installed in your home screen. In, uh, disinstalled, and uh, you don't pass through uh, stores, but you just get it from the URL, from the browser. So they start as a normal web page, I said, and you can add to home screen. Per definition, we have uh, at least th these three features. They should be reliable fast, engaging. So this is the definition of PWA from uh, Google developers uh, site. And most of this in cases of in packaging Flutter uh, into uh, PWA is done by Flutter code directly. So PWA is not a framework or a library, it's a set of technologies and practices allowing you to create uh, web applications similar to native ones. And behind PWA we have modern capabilities of browsers. Uh, and the two ma major components are service workers and the manifest.json file. Service worker is a JavaScript file that sits between the server and uh, the web browser and can do things on behalf of the server and the, and the web browser. One typical thing that we, uh, service workers do is uh, uh, providing the offline capabilities. And uh, in the other hand, we have manifest, which is um, which contains metadata about our website, how the our icon should look like. Uh, and how the name of it, how it should act when it's installed or when it's added in the home screen, and, uh, and so on. So basically, for, for calling a web page a PWA, the minimal checklist is the web app manifest, the service worker, and we need to serve our, uh, our page through HTTPS as service workers were calling it HTTPS. We need at least one icon, and uh, uh, to put everything together, we need a simple HTML page. So what I'm going to show you is how to package a PWA, a Flutter code into a PWA. This is a simple uh, quotes app. It has some animations. It, read, it uh, gets data from the, from the network and it displays them. Simple. So this is the code of the, of the application. Simple widgets, we fetch data, and uh, mostly that's it. I can't see it right here. So let's pass through. 
So in, to uh, start uh, uh, creating our PWA, the first thing, we create a manifest file. To do that, we can use uh, this uh, uh, web app where we're going to put some, com some configurations, the name of our app, uh, the, the short name, how it should behave, if in case we need the UI of the browsers or without the UI of browsers, uh, and uh, we put at least one, uh, we put a, a single um, uh, file, uh, image file, and we can generate and download it. So this will be how our manifest.json file will look like, simple JSON file. And the second thing we do is uh, creating the service worker. So we're going to create a, 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 service, a, servi a, a JavaScript file. And in this case, uh, service workers has their own life cycle. They are registered, installed, and activated. Uh, service worker, I said they can act like a proxy by, fit, by listening the network, uh, uh, the network requests and, uh, and uh, uh, responding. So in this case, uh, why, why, when the service worker is uh, installed, uh, I just put uh, in the browser cache the static files. I'm going to put the index.html and the main.js. So I said main.js, it has all the our Flutter app inside it. And I just put index.html also as a static file. So I'm put it, putting it in the cache in the added event, add event store install. And uh, at Fitch, um, we're going to uh, respond with the cached uh, assets. And if they're not cached, it's going to fetch from the network. And then we just need to wrap up everything by registering a service worker. We do it in the index uh, HTML. In this case, I'm just putting it in the builded uh, folder and uh, adding the script uh, uh, in the HTML. And can put some meta tags for uh, platform specific meta tags and get the, also the manifest.json. So this is all we need to create a PWA from, uh, from, uh, from any, or any uh, web app, the minimal requirements. So basically, we build the DAL application and the output is, uh, uh, with the, at the output, we added the the JavaScript file, the manifest JSON, and the image. So we are ready. We have a PWA. This is just a simple, uh, in, uh, simple uh, ads that we did. And now we are ready. We can deploy that and uh, see it if it works. So in this case, I'm gonna use the. Oh. I'm going, I don't know if the code, you can see the code, but anyways, it doesn't matter. So, uh, uh, okay. So in this case, I'm going to use Firebase. Firebase uh, can, uh, uh, with Firebase, we just uh, click command, you can deploy it in the, in the, in the cloud. And uh, all we need is just uh, an account of Gmail and uh, uh, we need NPM installed. And uh, with two commands, we can just uh, deploy it and get the URL in the, the browser. Beautiful. Technical issues. So deploying is like a matter of seconds or minutes. So we got the URL. I should fasten that. So we have it online now. 
and uh, it's a PWA. Uh, basically, when, if it is the first time we visit from Android uh, phones, we'll have the prompt saying if we want to install the PWA. In this case, we're gonna just use an add it to home screen. Oh, the video is slow. <laughs> so we have it, it looks like an app. We click it, it doesn't have the UI of the uh, browser, and it runs full screen. And we can play with it. So, uh, we have, uh, thanks to the Flutter for Web Support, we can do that simply in just a matter of uh, minutes and share our app, our app to, our, uh, uh, to, to anybody and have it uh, available in the, in the internet. In this case, as a PWA, we have the uh, both icons coexisting in the same uh, screen, in the same home screen. One that runs as a, uh, as a, a, in a web page, and the other one, which is a native uh, app. So we can provide also this to our clients, but letting them decide, or our users, letting them decide if they want a native app or if they want just a browser app. One other cool thing about PWAs that is that uh, now they are supported also in desktop. So if we have like Chrome, um, a, a latest version of Chrome, higher than 73, we can install a PWA in uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, and Chrome OS. And, into, and act just like a des uh, desktop uh, applications. So we, with the support of Flutter for Web, we used the Flutter, simple Flutter code, we, we uh, created a PWA, and then we published it. Uh, this is a, a way to uh, test also, for example, uh, deliver fast, uh, not passing through a source. Oh, sorry. So to check out if it's PWA or to uh, check out performance, we can use uh, Lightout, which is uh, a tool we had right inside a Chrome Dev tool under the Audis tab. We can run it and see the performance of our uh, Flutter code compiled to a PWA, see if, has, if it has all the requirements. And at the same time, we can have hints regarding the performance of the application, the accessibility, the best practices, and uh, so on. And we can do it also with the, uh, at the web.dev. It will give us the same, uh, uh, the same uh, uh, metrics to understand uh, if our web app from Flutter code is uh, performant enough for now. So basically, uh, Flutter is in for web is in beta uh, version and uh, is not recommended for production, but we can do some tool things uh, with it. We can use it just for testing, we can use it for uh, enriching web applications, we can use it uh, for reusing codes across uh, uh, cross-platform and uh, uh, also in the web. But one of the coolest thing of web is like, is the easy deployment. We, we have no install friction, so we can, and we have more users trying your app. And we can quickly iterate on, uh, on our app. And uh, Flutter for Web make that possible. And the web is a great way for delivering uh, 
a quick interaction cycle to improve our products and to show our, our, uh, our applications. Okay, it's 10 minutes left. So I'm done, if you have questions. Hello, thank you for Hello. the presentation. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, yes. a quite obvious one about the schedule of uh, release dates. Uh, currently, Flutter uh, Web is in beta stage. Do you have maybe any inside information when uh, it would go to production state? And the second question, you've showed us some plugins. Personally, I have, I have no experience in the Flutter Web, but uh, those plugins are official, and if no, then any, are any official plugins planned for release? Thank you. In terms of uh, release, uh, no idea. <laughs> um, and uh, in terms of plugins, I didn't get the second. Sorry, the second. Um, those plugins are official. Uh, made so the plugins that I show are yeah. official. Okay. And some other plugins. Uh, uh, work. Mm -hmm. uh, in the demo that I show, I, I use the photo viewer plugin, which uh, is working. Uh, I tried uh, some plugins uh, around. Not all work, even if they have the uh, web support uh, flag put, in, put, it, uh, put it in the pub.dev, but most of them work. So in terms of plugins, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, depends. Okay. Uh, I started uh, uh, like uh, in technical preview with uh, URL launcher by uh, separating code from uh, mobile and, uh, and web, but now it works. Uh, I noticed that mail, uh, sending mail with URL launcher is not working. Uh, yeah, but uh, like most, most plugins are there. Okay. Uh, some don't work really as uh, we expected. Okay. But yeah. Thank you very much. Oh. Uh, hi, thanks for your, uh, for your work and uh, I have a question. Uh, as I understood, we can integrate a uh, flat ap application inside uh, some existing web app, but uh, can we do vice versa? Can we uh, integrate, get some uh, JavaScript, for example, Google Map for web and uh, inject it inside uh, the flat of web application? because there is currently no uh, Google Maps plugin for Flutter for web and, uh, well, uh, personally me, uh, I need it. So can I do that? Uh, I didn't try the Google Maps plugin, but in terms of interoperability with, interoperability with JavaScript, we can use the uh, Dart for web package, Dart.js, or the package.js. I was trying to integrate jQuery as experiment, and it works. Uh, so yeah, this, there are workarounds to uh, interrupt with JavaScript inside uh, uh, Flutter for web. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. <clears throat> Hi, uh, thanks. Um, I have another two questions. The first one is, when do you think will Flutter for Web will be established in the web community? Because right now we have Angular, React and Vue, which are very popular. How much time do you think, if it ever will be possible to use Flutter in web um, in a productive way, will it take for it uh, to become into that state? Uh, I'm an Angular and React developer, <laughs> and uh, I think it's different the way to adapt Flutter uh, and comparing it to, uh, to the web frameworks. I'm not sure if uh, 
uh, everybody of, of um, a web developer can be uh, happy with that. But uh, so, in terms of uh, it's the way the, it's the, not, the way the way it's uh, uh, like the other way around, meaning. Uh, uh, you adapt Flutter, you used it, and you need, you want it as a cross-platform, so you go with the Flutter way. Uh, in terms of React and Angular, if you are a React developer, you, you use React Native, so I mean there's a bit gap and uh, also in terms of how to apply them. Uh, so established in web uh, into uh, web community, I don't know, it's just different. In the other hand, in web community, there is also the, uh, uh, the there are new APIs coming out. Uh, there is, uh, there are um, uh, a, lot, uh, war, a lot of experiments being done to gapping the native uh, applications and web applications. So it's just, I think it's uh, a different, uh, 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 different perspective for now. I mean, PWAs are becoming like mobile apps. Um, experiments like uh, accessing to the file system or either uh, biometric recognition through web, web serial, uh, and so on, the background synchronization. So there are a lot of experiments that actually permit for, for web to act like a native app. So I don't know. It's uh, Okay, um, the other question. What's about search engine optimization? Because when we use Angular or React, uh, we use something like uh, server-side rendering. Yes. Um, is Flutter for web optimized for search engine optimization? Uh, uh, I just checked for a, for a SEO checker to see. Uh, with Flutter, we have everything already done for us. We have like uh, not that much control. Right now, I mean, with the way it's going, we just have a compiled file and we take it. We don't go through HTML or uh, anything else to use also the server-side rendering. So we just uh, leave that for the compiler and for the uh, best practice being applied to the compiled JavaScript. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello, thank you for your presentation. Hello. Uh, my question is like, is there a long-term vision for Flutter app, like to not be dependent sometimes in the future, to not be dependent on JavaScript compiler, but like to have a totally different approach, just like mobile is like different from React Native, for example. I think there are approaches, and uh, I didn't dig on that, like using WebAssembly and everything, I just heard about it. Uh, I don't know. I know there are experiments in general, but I don't know the details of that. I didn't uh, uh, see it yet. So yeah, it might be. Uh, I personally prefer the Dart to Jazz compiler <laughs> and uh, the integration with the new, new APIs also, which can be performant, like the CSS Paint API, the the Houdini project, uh, and uh, and so on. So. Uh, that's all uh, of experiments to do and uh, uh, in terms of not using the uh, HTML, CSS, uh, CSS and JavaScript, yeah, there are experiments, but I didn't try that out. Okay, thank you. Thank you.